transposition of the great arteries or TGA is the topic but I think before we get into TGA it's very important to talk about the fetal circulation and then we'll talk about TGA so I'll draw a very very um, easy to understand diagram of the heart where these are the four chambers left ventricle left atrium right ventricle right atrium and then I'll draw these little openings that are uh, of course uh, valves and then coming through each of these is blood and um, this is the pulmonary uh, artery and um, it normally goes to the lung we'll draw a lung in here uh, but in the fetal circulation the um, lung is not mature yet so we actually don't do this so there's no reason to draw that in there it'd just be confusing um, there is a way that the baby or the fetus rather gets blood uh, that is oxygenated and that is via the umbilical vein so the umbilical vein is really at the heart of fetal circulation it carries the oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus so that's very important to remember and then it comes in to the right side of the heart via the IVC inferior vena cava and then it goes through the chambers into the pulmonary artery and then it comes through to this side how we just said that it doesn't go to the lungs well there's a special connection and I'll exaggerate it well before I write it in I should put the aorta in here this is the aorta that's coming out through the left ventricle there's a special connection between the pulmonary artery and the aorta and I'll I'll draw it really big to sort of exaggerate it like that and that connection um, is known as the ductus arteriosus. I'll write it over here. I can abbreviate it DA. I'll see if I can squeeze in DA. Okay. Now what that does is it simply just allows the blood to come to the left side and out through the aorta. Now there's two, uh, there's one other uh, uh, hole and that's up here and this one is called the foramen ovule foramen ovule so essentially what happens is when the blood comes back uh, to the right atrium initially most of it actually goes through the foramen ovule to the left uh, atrium and then the blood comes down to the left ventricle and then out through the aorta the blood that doesn't go through here that kind of passes through the right ventricle will eventually be able to get to the aorta via the ductus arteriosus here so that's how uh, fetal circulation works in TGA what happens is a some something that pretty much seems like a disaster which is these great vessels are transposed so instead of this being the pulmonary um, artery this actually is now the aorta and instead of this being the aorta this is now the pulmonary artery so as you can see that's a complete disaster so that's what happens in transposition of great vessels so I drew a, another diagram in here to of course, sort of save time now as you can see it's the same same heart no difference it's just the, the great vessels have transposed and this is of course after birth we are no longer technically in the fetal circulation because as you can see I wrote put the lung in there the lungs now pretty much part of the the game so what's happening now well blood's coming back to the right atrium it's deoxygenated so deoxygenated and then it goes through to the right ventricle and then goes to the aorta and the aorta pumps it out but the aorta is pumping out deoxygenated blood and that's incompatible with life of course you need to pump out oxygenated blood 
Now, what's happening on this side? Well, if there's any blood that goes into the pulmonary artery, it goes to the lung, picks up oxygen, and then travels back through the pulmonary vein to the left atrium. But then it goes right back to the pulmonary artery and then to the lung again, it goes round and round. So we need to have some sort of uh, relief here. And there's three possible places. The first one is up here. And if you remember from the first diagram, what this is, is a foramen ovulate. And if it's open after birth, it's called a patent foramen ovulate, or PFO. So this right here is a PFO, and it allows blood that's deoxygenated, oh, sorry, the blood that's oxygenated to go back. And I think it's probably best if I were to use a different color to describe the deoxygenated blood. Probably make the diagram a little easier to understand, so I'll use pink. That kind of shows that it doesn't have enough oxygen. So that's the, the PFO is the first place where the right side of the heart can get oxygenated blood. The second place is right here, this opening right here. Now what's this? We never talked about this in the first diagram. This is a VSD, ventral septal defect. This can uh, occur along with transposition of great arteries. It doesn't always happen, but it can. When it does, it allows blood to go uh, from the left side to the right side. And then the third and final relief is right here. And this one we already talked about. This is the ductus arteriosus. And it can also allow blood that's oxygenated to go to the right side and then out through the aorta into the circulation. So that is essentially a diagrammatic um, explanation of TGA. So now let's get into the symptoms. Well, as you can imagine, uh, because there's not enough oxygenation, you will have severe cyanosis um, pretty much within hours of birth, within a few hours of birth. And then also, you can have symptoms of heart failure, such as a rapid uh, increased respiratory rate, increased heart rate, and of course, difficulty breathing. And these are not difficult to understand. The baby just isn't getting the oxygen. Another thing that's really important to talk about is that you can also get um, metabolic acidosis. And this is commonly mentioned in clinical vignettes. And the reason this is because the lack of oxygen uh, is making a situation that the tissues are not getting oxygen. So that can lead to this metabolic acidosis. So how do you diagnose this? Initially, you can do an EKG, and uh, you can do a chest x-ray. And the chest x-ray does have a very classic sign. It's called egg on a string. That's how the cardiac shadow appears. Um, kind of like, kind of like that. Like, I encourage you to look it up to see what this looks like on a chest x-ray. They'll talk about this in clinical vignettes as well. And then the definitive diagnosis is done by an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is really how you diagnose this. And you will see the, the, um, the, the vessels that are improperly placed. Treatment of this? Well, there's a couple things. The, the definitive treatment, of course, is surgical. You have to put the arteries in the right place. You have to put the aorta you know, connected to the left ventricle and you have to connect the pulmonary artery to the right ventricle. But there is something you can do and it's called prostaglandin E1. What that does is it keeps the uh, ductus arteriosus open. And when you do that, you allow uh, that uh, left to right shunting which allows the oxygenated blood to come to the uh, right side of the heart and that can improve the circulation. So let's look at a couple of vignettes, see what this looks like. Let's look at the second one first. A neonate develops severe cyanosis that begins within minutes of birth. 
Blood drawn one hour after birth shows metabolic acidosis with respiratory acidosis. Chest x-ray shows a narrow base to the great vessels and a heart resembles an egg on its side. EKG is normal. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Uh, this is a nice clinical vignette that is basically describing transposition of the great vessels. And then the last one, a newborn develops severe cyanosis uh, occurs within hours of birth. The baby also has symptoms and signs of heart failure, tachypnea, dyspnea, and tachycardia. On physical exam, the second heart sound is single and loud. On chest x-ray, the cardiac shadow shows a classic egg on a string appearance. Diagnosis of transposition of the great vessels is established by two-dimensional echocardiography with color flow and Doppler studies. It is decided to keep the ductus arterioles open to allow more oxygenated blood to enter into the circulation. Which of the following would be best to administer to this patient? I think this should say ductus arteriosus. But a little bit of a typo there. Well, basically they're saying is they want to keep that ductus arteriosus open. And you do that with prostaglandin. Interestingly, choice B would actually close it. So you wouldn't want to do that. So choice A.